Okay, so I want to take a look at a really cool method of removing rust from the inside of a motorcycle gas tank. Now, we had a lot of success with this tank a couple weeks back. The results at the end were fantastic. But I want to give this a try. The guys are talking about electrolysis. And basically, that's just using voltage. This stuff right here. Now, not exactly this stuff, because that's 10,000 volts and that's not going to cut it. AC won't work and 10,000 volts is way too much to be working with. That stuff is dangerous. Yeah, I just wanted to show you this because, well, first of all, it's kind of cool. 10,000 volts. And normally, you can't see voltage. But in this case, there you go. So the voltage we use for electrolysis is right here. Just a 12 volt battery, much safer than this craziness. You just fill it up with an electrolyte, make one side an anode, one side a cathode. We'll go into the science of that later. Apparently it works really well. So the next part of this is I wanna get a good look inside the tank so we can get some before and after shot. Now I got this pretty cool camera here. I can't tell you how much I love this thing. It's a Rile cam, fully articulating borescope. This thing is the dog's bollocks. Watch this. It actually bends around. Can you see that? Like, look at this thing. What? Are you kidding me? Click this dial around and it bends around corners. Friggin' unbelievable. Beautiful for this type of work. So, thing we want to do is set a benchmark. Get a good view of what we're up against for the first part of this video. And we can see how much rust is actually in this thing. Oh yeah, right on that lower left side. So that's where, you know, obviously a lot of water would, or moisture would hang out down on the bottom. And however the tank is tilted, that's where you're gonna get most of the moisture sitting all the time. It's pretty much identical both sides. There's the roof of the tank. It's not horrible, but there's definitely enough rust there that if electrolysis can do anything, should be able to get that off. So the real test will be down the bottom there, right on that bottom left side, right around the petcock, it's very heavy. You can see that right there. Okay, so there you go. We've got a benchmark. We know what we're up against. And if electrolysis is as good as they say, it should be able to take care of it. So let's go on to stage two. Okay, before we get too far, I figured it'd be a good idea to kind of get a handle on what electrolysis really is. Electrolysis is the process of passing an electric current through a substance to affect a chemical change. I got a couple of electrodes. This is just a half inch threaded rod, all rusty. It's been sitting out back in a junk pile for probably 10 years. And I've got an identical piece. This has been cleaned up a bit. There's no rust on it. One's going to represent the gas tank. So the rusty one is going to be the cathode or the rusty side of the gas tank. And then the anode, this one's gonna be positively charged, this one's gonna be negatively charged. Apparently the rust from the cathode is repelled and attracted to the positive electrode here, the anode. Okay, so the next part is we gotta make an electrolytic solution or an electrolyte. So I started with about two liters of water. Now they recommend using some baking soda or borax to create an effective electrolyte. Now, I might've been a little sloppy getting the ratio right, and it seemed to take a long time to get it to dissolve properly and I don't think it ever did. But whatever, it still worked okay. Come on! What the f Okay, that's good enough. Okay, so the next part of this is to get these electrodes dangling in here. Now all we gotta do is attach a battery to this. I think it's all based on how much voltage you got. So if you had like 24 volts, it would be quicker, um, but there's probably a ceiling amount. We're just gonna use 12 volts. And then it also depends on how much rust you gotta get rid of and probably the solution. So there's a few factors in there. You know, something to think about too is the beauty of electrolysis is that it's self-regulated. As this process continues, as soon as the rust is all gone, the process automatically stops. It just doesn't keep pulling away material from one side to the other and like eroding the metal that you wanna keep. It beats using any sort of high acid thing. So if you use like really caustic acid and put it in a gas tank, sure, you'll get rid of all the rust, but if you leave it in there too long, you're gonna start getting rid of metal and you're gonna end up with a paper thin gas tank. Yeah, not good. So let's get this thing connected. Red is typically always positive. And the negative is typically black. Oh, look at that, man. There's like bubbles happening already. Wow, that was pretty quick. What the shit? All right, well, let's see what kind of voltage we got here. Yep, 12.81. So over time, just because it's a battery, it's always losing voltage, right? So, you know, the smart thing to do, especially if you're gonna do a tank, is to put a charger on it so that it just trickle charges as it goes. So as the battery slowly dropping charge away, 
We've got a charger helping keep that sustained 12 volts. All right, we'll come back in a bit, see what happened. All right, there we go. It's been about two and a half hours. The process has slowed down a little bit, um, but man, oh man, you can already see a massive change. So let's disconnect it and see up close what we got. What kind of voodoo magic is this? That is impressive. All the rust from this side has jumped across to this. Okay, now here's a close look at the now rusty anode after I pulled it out and let it dry. Look at all the rust. You could actually see the rust jumping from the cathode, zipping through the fluid and attaching itself to the anode. How crazy is that? Wow, no wonder guys like using this process. All right, well, we've proven the concept in the lab, so to speak, so we know it works. Let's go prove it again with the tank. Real world application. Okay, let's go do this. Okay, so now we're gonna tackle the tank. And the smart money says to mix up a fair amount of electrolyte ahead of time, you know, scale it up, right? This time we're gonna use hot water to help it dissolve. Now, if you remember how much trouble we had last time with the ratio, I couldn't get it to mix right. So I did some extensive research online and uh, what I mean by extensive research, uh, some guy on YouTube said just use one tablespoon per liter. Sounds good to me, we'll do that. Break out the borax and precisely mix one tablespoon per liter. Yup, that's the exact amount right there. All right, stir away. Are you kidding me? I think I'm using that? Hell no, man, we're going with power tools this time. Oh yeah, baby! Whew. Now that's way better than a spoon. All right, let's go do this. All right, well, we got the borax electrolyte solution all figured out, so we're good there. And I know it's gotta be mixed, right? Cause some guy on YouTube said so. How can you argue with that, right? All right, let's electrify this tank. Now, first thing to look at is to make sure we got a good connection to the body of the tank. So all I had to do was secure this cable to the bolt that mounts the petcock. So we got a nice secure connection to the tank, which is the negative, which is making the tank the cathode. So we're set up there. Now the next tricky bit was how are we gonna get the anode fixed into here? And I wanted to use the same material because we proved it in the lab, so to speak. Um, just a half inch threaded rod, and we know that works. Now the tricky bit is how are we gonna get this thing suspended in here so it's not wobbling around and bashing on the side of the tank, shorting things out. So thought about it for a while and I ended up coming up with this, just a hunk of wood and it just sits across the top. Once you feed it in, it sits there like that. But again, it's not really that secure. If you look at it, I mean, it's not like I can just let it go. So I had to come up with some way to get this more solid. I figured if I go out to the junk pile out back, I'm gonna find something. I ended up coming up with this, I'll show you. It's an old wire cradle. It sits here like this, wedge that in like that. So that makes that whole thing pretty secure. If you can imagine on the inside of that tank, I'll cut this tank in half. You can see here, so basically it just goes in through the neck, suspended high enough that it's not gonna to touch the bottom. So it's got a nice gap, see that? Perfect gap. So that gives you a rough idea what it looks like on the inside. Let's get some juice inside this thing. Damn, what a tank is this thing? All right, should be enough. Now all we gotta do is Delicately insert the anode. We got the negative, which is the cathode going to the negative on the battery. And we're gonna take the red, positive. Let's see if this does anything, sparks or something. Good. Didn't wanna see sparks. Well, something's definitely happening. Got a bit of a boil going on and getting a little foamy in there like a rabid coyote, so must be working. I don't know if it's just my imagination, but I think I can smell maybe a little bit of hydrogen, so yeah, probably a good idea to leave that door open. Come back in two, three hours and we'll see where we're at. 
Okay, made it back. I'm genuinely excited to see what kind of progress we made here. Now this electrified borax soup has been boiling away for probably, I don't know, three and a half, maybe four hours. So yeah, it should be long enough. I really don't know. I'm not getting any whiffs of hydrogen, no heavy gas smell. And that's probably part and parcel to having this door open and letting the wind blow through. We want this place pretty well ventilated. We don't need another Hindenburg happening. One was enough. Smoke in the grave now, all the humanity. Okay, so I'm gonna kill the charger. Okay. Let's see what we got here. It's exciting, Let's see where we're at. Well, there you go. Look at that. All right, well, it's got some rust on it. It's not quite as thick as I thought it might be. Yeah, I don't know. I think I'm gonna give this a few tries. We'll maybe cycle it through three or four times, see if this thing continually builds rust over time. So maybe that's the trick. I don't know. Either way, not bad. Yeah, we'll dry it off, clean it off, go for round two. Eight rounds later. Okay, so after about seven or eight sessions, the accumulation of rust on the electrode was really starting to slow down. So I figured we were kind of maxing out. Now the whole process was after each session, I would take the electrode out, dry it off, then scrape off the rust and uh, just make a little pile of it. And once I started putting it all together, I was really surprised at how much rust there really was. But I think we're at the end of it. It's time to dump out all that juice. Bust out the camera. Have a look inside that thing and see if all the effort was worth it. Okay, the results are in. And I gotta tell you, I was genuinely shocked at the results. It was very impressive. Now the first thing I noticed was right around here where this badging is, the Kawasaki logo is kind of stamped into here and there's an indent on the tank that gives you a real good visual. That whole tank wall on both sides is excellent. Next thing I wanted to look at was the bottom of the tank, especially where the tank wall meets the bottom of the tank. There's a crease there. Rust tends to hang up in there. I mean, it ain't perfect, but it's damn close. The kicker was right here, where the petcock bolts into the bottom of the tank. I mean, look at that. That is impressive. I mean, it's not 100% perfect, but it's pretty damn good. Some of the best results I've ever seen. Now there's a hundred different ways of cleaning the inside of a motorcycle gas tank. And I've tried a bunch of them, but this is definitely gonna be one of my first go-to methods. Now, if you wanna see one of the other methods I tried, check out this video right here. You might be glad you did. All right, I got stuff to do. See ya.